Hey, everybody. Ooh, okay. Gonna let that participant panel um, see as people straggle in. Excellent, seeing people in the chat. If you love Mariana or the Belcoms, then you are in the right place. If you do not like Mariana or the Belcoms, then hopefully after this 50 minutes, you will. Um, and if you still don't, then please contact me and um, I will talk all day about them so that you can decide to like them. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. I see oh, lots, good. lots of Team Mariana coming in. Awesome. Are those like paid participants? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm, um, I've been known to do some crazy things to bring support to Team Mariana, so. <laughs> I've got some really good questions for this. I can't wait to ask at the end. Good, good, good. Excellent. I love it. In fact, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, so <laughs> that way, actually, so um, the format of this session, so I've got some um, information to share on some slides and a few things to show. But I want the um, Mariana, Mariana Lawton and the Belcom session to be very conversational. So I know a lot of you had heard, have heard me talk on this topic a lot in the past. Um, and some of you, I see eye rolls, uh, some of you might be new to this topic. So I want people to be able to learn what they want to, find information that they want to. So feel free as we're going along in the chat to ask questions. Um, and I will try and, and keep up. And then obviously, once I get through the slides, um, if I've missed any, then we can always come back and do like the, the normal Q&A and discussion. So, um, okay, so here we go. Um, Mariana uh, Lawton and her family, the Belcoms. And um, of course, Team Mariana. Um, so just um, a little quick introduction um, for anybody that's not sure. So Mariana Lawton was um, um, in, in what I believe to be Ann Lister's like her longtime love of her life. Obviously, she ended up marrying Ann Walker, but Mariana and uh, Ann were together um, from, you know, their early years and their relationship spanned over 20 years. And so Mariana was a very huge presence in Anne's life um, from the time they met until the time that Anne Lister passed away. So, um, and their relationship of course did kind of oscillate. Um, it was always the will she, won't she, when is Charles going to die so we can be together? Um, and um, of course we all know that, um, or we'll spoil alert, uh, Mariana and Anne did not end up together unfortunately. So um, even though they tried, um, but this is going to talk about um, Mariana um, and then her family, which I've become fascinated with. So, you know, the Belcoms, we, um, we only see Steph on the TV show. So, but for the people who don't know about them, there's several more Belcoms and they've got their own, you know, very interesting story. Um, and um, so first I want to um, go ahead and introduce uh, Mariana. So, one of the cool things um, that we're all, you know, trying to find is pictures of people and background information and all this kind of stuff. And so one of my um, long time um, adventures has been to track down all of their graves. So, I, I, you know, getting pictures of their graves because there's not a whole lot of pictures of anything else. And so today I want to share um, a really cool picture that Ann Choma has actually um, shared with me um, and allowed me to share for this presentation today. Um, a um, um, picture of um, young Mariana Lawton. Um, so this is, um, um, was um, purchased I think from a, um, an, an estate sale. Um, but yeah, it had found its way over to the United States. And so this is, um, I know they're still like double checking and verifying, but um, it is a huge um, for sure that this is the young Mariana. And so you'll be able to see some similarities between her and her, her dad and her brother, because um, we have the two pictures of them. But now we know 
what Mariana looked like as a young person um, that we have not known. So um, I don't know, some of you might know that I have a Mariana tattoo. And if I would have known this existed before my tattoo, then this probably would have been the picture on it instead of um, Lydia Leonard. But I do have another arm, so we'll see what happens. So this is Mariana, young Mariana. Um, this is, you know, whatever, whatever you take away from the picture, this is what she looks like. Um, so, but in addition to this one, um, we've also been gifted by um, Mr. John Lawton, a um, descendant of the Lawtons and um, Mr. Lawton's brother, or Charles's brother. Um, a, another two more portraits actually. Um, so we have a, another portrait of, um, 1816 Mariana. This is believed to be shortly after her wedding. Um, and then we also have Charles, um, which was probably, uh, you know, uh, painted at the same time. So um, I am going to go ahead and, and add that copyright. Uh, Mr. Lawton has um, asked extremely nicely that everybody um, um, uh, respect his copyright. And um, so like we said before, please no screenshots. Um, he's got plans to do with, he's got plans to do things with these. So, um, we should, uh, be very respectful of that and, and let him do that in his own time. So he just wanted to be very kind and let us see this today because of what this, um, research summit is doing for everyone. So we can all thank, um, Mr. Lawton, um, and Anchoma for sharing these awesome pictures. Okay. So now we know what they look like. <laughs> well, we know what Mariana looks like, right? Um, and so um, there are um, other siblings of hers, though, that, of course, are just as um, just as interesting, um, maybe. So uh, the first group we have is the Belcombs, which I called the V1, because when you're talking about the Belcombs, some of them have multiple names or similar names. Um, there's three sets of, Bel well, two sets of Belcom families because Mrs. Milne has a family, but she's got a different last name, so it's easier. But we've got the two Belcom. So this is Belcom version one because um, um, Dr. William Belcom changed his name from Bullcock to Belcom in the um, late 1700s. And so um, they really are version one. This is the first Belcom family um, because technically their last name is Bullcock. So we've got um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Belcom um, and then Marianne, which some people might have seen the mom's name, Mariana. Um, that's what it is actually on her gravestone at St. Michael's La Belfry. Um, but her name from original documents is actually Mariana. Um, I'm sorry, is Marianne. And so um, sometimes that's been confused because Mary, the name Mariana Belcom is on the wall in St. Michael's, but it's not our Mariana and it's not the second Mariana. Um, so um, to uh, look at these siblings, we've got um, the first one, Nance. So her real name is Sarah Ann, Scher Sarah Ann Sherson Belcom. Um, and she was actually born when their names were still Bullcock. So she's actually Sarah Ann Sherson Bullcock, but was changed to Belcom. So if anybody starts to research Nance, know, know that because that is, um, um, one of the reasons why it was so hard to find information from her in the beginning. Uh, next, we've got um, uh, Mrs. Milne, wonderful Henrietta, um, also known as Harriet. Um, she, of course, came up in some previous sessions about her fondness for um, flirting with Anne and apparently others. Then we've got Mariana, Percy Lawton, um, and... Um, followed by Steph. So Henry Stevens Belcom, um, of course, he was the, the only son, the only one to carry on the Belcom name, um, which he did, thank goodness. Um, and then his wife, Harriet Cotton Bagshaw. So um, Harriet um, was actually previously married before him and had two daughters from her first marriage. So um, he had two stepdaughters when, when he married Harriet. Uh, we follow that up with Ellie, um, Eliza Stibbert Miller. So uh, there's not a whole lot known about her. Um, she's kind of, her, her husband was a reverend, so they kind of traveled a lot and then just sort of disappeared. So, um, uh, well, at least like from the records. And so there is, there is a lots to learn about Ellie out there um, for anybody who wants to, wants to do that. 
And then we follow that up with Lou. Um, so um, I always like to say good old Lou, but um, Lou, so her, so her full name is Louisa Manel Travis Belcom. And so the cool thing about this family is this is one of the, um, well, I don't want to say few families, but at least that I've come across in the journals and stuff where all the kids have middle names um, and they all have middle, different middle names um, based on either godparents, family members, or friends of Dr. Belcombe's um, when he was in Scarborough or York. Um, so it does give them all very kind of interesting, unique names. Um, but this is the order. So um, Nance was the oldest and um, Mariana and of course, Steph were the middle ones. Um, and then Lou was the baby. So um, of the family. So I don't know if like when people are looking at family dynamics, if um, how that sort of played as it does today in that family. Um, but um, yeah, those are the um, version one of the Belcoms while they, um, um, yeah, and so sorry, they lived in, so they started out in um, um, Scarborough for a few years because Dr. Belcom um, was um, a physician there and then he was also a volunteer in the um, cavalry, the volunteer cavalry there. So he was an officer and um, once he had settled traveling, so he was a, like a traveling physician and then several of the kids were born in multiple countries. So we've got like Germany and um, um, Switzerland. Uh, Lou was the only one that was born in Scarborough. And so the family stayed in Scarborough for about uh, seven or eight years and then moved to York in the early 1800s. And so they were there until Dr. Belcom, well, Dr. Belcom was there until 1828 when he died. And then the rest of them, of course, married off um, and did, did different things or didn't marry off, but went and, and traveled around. So one of the other unknowns um, of the uh, Belcombs is where they lived. So um, when Anne writes to the Belcombs, it's always on, it's High Peter Gate, right? So we do know that they lived on High Peter Gate and there's um, books um, from the 1800s that list all of the um, like physicians and, and people that own shops and says where their address is. But of course it only shows the street, but Dr. Belcom is always listed as High Peter Gate. So we do know that street is where they lived. Um, and there's been some, uh, some people have said that it was eight Peter Gate, but um, we haven't been able to find any references on that. And um, the, what is called High Peter Gate, I'm sorry, eight High Peter Gate today um, actually was owned, like you can track the ownership of that house. So. Um, if anybody likes digging through deeds, which um, apparently, interesting enough, York, so in Yorkshire, all of the areas or most of the areas kept records, specific records of deeds, but York of all places kept their own deeds and there is no full definitive deed list of the buildings in York. So you have to go to multiple archives to try and get this information. Um, and so that's why it hasn't been as easy to track down their actual house where they grew up. Um, uh, so, oh, I saw somebody say uh, nine Peter Gate. So nine Peter Gate was actually uh, Tib, Tib, the Norcliffe's um, townhouse, which you can see um, the building that's kind of got the windows that sticks out on the left. That's Tib's, Tib's family's townhouse. And so they spent a lot of time there. And that's um, Tib actually ended up passing away in, in that townhouse, which today is a restaurant that you can go and eat and drink at, and I would recommend that to anybody. Um, but if anybody's interested in uh, old buildings and stuff, that is still an unknown out there, is actually where the Balcoms lived. Um, so uh, on, so for Mariana, right, so sometimes you might hear me call her V1, um, or the Mariana. So of course we know she married Ann Lister. I mean, I'm sorry, she married Charles because she couldn't marry Ann Lister and they moved to Lawton Hall, which is in um, Cheshire. Um, so um, Lawton Hall actually has went through multiple renovations. So when she moved in there, it did not look like what we see today. Um, and then today it has turned into a, um, a private residence. So it's been split up into, I think six apartments um, that are, it's a, it's a gated community. So, 
Um, but um, there's, you know, I know there's been all the, like when Charles died and all of that kind of stuff. And so Charles died in 1860. And so from 1860 to 1868, um, Mariana moved in with Lou in Belsize Park in London. So it was really cool because you've got on one corner, you've got um, Lou and Mariana living in a house. Um, and then right around the corner, you have Ellie and her husband. So you kind of have, uh, you know, they kind of back together again. So you've got like three of the sisters um, kind of golden girls in it in London for their last years. And so um, the um, after Mariana died, though, she was buried with Charles um, in Church Lawton Cemetery, which is just a little skip over from from Lawton Hall. Uh, I don't know if that was her request because I have not been able to find her will. Um, with any specifics. Um, so I don't know if that was a long-term decision or how that ended up, but she was buried in this um, big fancy gravestone. Charles's inscription is on the other side. Hers is on, on, on this side with the nice little fence around it. Um, so the other pictures of the Belcombs that I have are their graves. And so I've been on a mission to find all of them. Um, and I've almost got all of them except Nance's. So Nance has been a mystery, but, um, Mrs. Milne. So, um, she died a few months before, uh, Charles did actually. So Mariana had a rough year in 1860. So her sister, um, which of course she knew, that Anne and Mrs. Milne had fooled around. Um, but hopefully, since they did end up living near each other in those last years, hopefully they were getting along. But Mrs. Milne dies um, in January of 1860, followed by um, Charles um, in that next month. So she lost her, her husband and her one of her sisters um, um, really close together in that first year. But she, but Mrs. Milne is buried right across the walkway at Church Lawton from Mariana. And so another interesting thing that was literally stumbled on with this uh, grave was that one of their uncles, one of the Bullcock uncles is actually buried in that spot as well. And so he's got an inscription on there. Um, but then we've got, so Ellie, she, um, her and her husband, Mr. Miller or Reverend Miller, right? They were living in Belsize and they um, are buried together in this plot in Hampstead Parish in London. And um, um, it was really cool when we found this because it was completely covered in all of these vines and stuff. So we had to clean it off. But um, the church was actually really helpful with with helping us with maps and 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 you know, tracking that grave down. Um, the next one, Lou, so her inscription is completely gone. You can tell she's was probably sitting out there in this field by herself for a long time because there's not many other old gravestones near her. Um, but she's in Kinsel Green Cemetery um, where some of the Norcliffs are. So like Norcliffe, Norcliffe, he's there with the big fancy gravestone. Um, but Lou is another... Um, will that I have not been able to find. So I don't know if there was like mention in these wills. I haven't done much research on wills and like what, besides like passing on property and money, like what else they were used for. So I'm not even sure if that would have been something mentioned in a will, um, but I don't know. I haven't been able to find anything about why this is where everybody ended up um, like specifically. Um, so we've got Steph. Um, so he's buried in the York Cemetery and his, all of his family um, is, is on the gravestone, but only a few of the members are actually buried there. But um, most, uh, unfortunately, most except for Mrs. Milne and next Mrs. Belcombe, um, the inscriptions have been worn off because of weathering. So um, We've been lucky that some of the churches have kept catalogs of the inscriptions back when they were legible. So like if you're looking for graves, always reach out to the churches in the area because that would be like, if they've been keeping really good records, they'll be the ones that either have maps or you know information on years and stuff like that. Um, and so yeah, Mrs. Belcom, um, she is buried at St. Michael's La Belfry along with her nephew which is Mrs. Milne's son, Alexander Milne. And there's also some evidence that Nance was buried there, but um, 
St. Michael's now is surrounded by a street and um, uh, like pavement in the front. So what used to be the graveyard that was there is no longer there. So at one time they moved the bodies, but unfortunately um, not all of the records were kept, kept correctly. So we don't know where all the bodies were moved to um, or what, where all the caskets and stuff were moved to. Um, but um, the record indicates that like the actual burial record, official burial record of Nance indicates that she was buried at St. Michael's but that's there's no record of like where and then if she was moved so she might be the only one that does not have a gravestone for us to find one day um okay so i'm going to see if there are any comments or questions about grave finding i guess because i have spent a lot of time um in these graveyards and trying to find them because I, I felt since we didn't have any pictures i felt like that might be the only way that we really get to like see them in some way. Um, and so, um, yeah, there was, there was a lot of, um, oh, um, how long did it take? Oh, that was, so I guess probably six or six or seven months total, except Mrs. Milne. So she was, she, we like stumbled across her. So, um, when, once the searching like actually started and that's, so somebody else made a comment about church records. So yes, church records are super, super detailed. So, um, if you, that's always a good starting point. So if you know that somebody might have went to church there or lived nearby, contacting the church um, is an excellent starting point. And um, the churches, because I'm guessing they don't get much like interest in finding old graves and stuff, they're actually super, super nice and, and very helpful when it comes to this kind of stuff. So if they don't have records, there's been several times where they've directed me where I can go to find more information. So I would, I would always suggest if you're doing research on grave finding, definitely um, reach out to the, the churches or church that you might, that might be on your list. Um, uh, yes. So what about Mary, Mariana's niece? So I will be getting to her because she's one of my other favorites. Um, the other grave that I don't have a picture of, but I do know where it's at. Um, but the church was closed the day that I was there is a, um, uh, Dr. Belcombs. So he's buried in St. Mary's in Scarborough. Uh, the family actually had an apartment there or actually a, a large building that I think today is multiple apartments. Um, so when I was doing deed searches for High Petergate, um, Scarborough actually um, has a very uh, complete deed set. So you can, um, I think it's the East Riding Yorkshire, East Riding Archives. Um, when I contacted them, they were able to do a deed search and find exactly where the um, Belcombs lived on Nicholas Street. And so it changed names a few times. So at one point it was um, Long Street, be, um, and, um, but now today it's St. Nicholas. And so um, their house or apartment, I don't know. I always forget like what things were called back then when it comes to like apartments or houses or whatever, but it's part of one of those long, long um like brownstone type things and so um but it is on saint nicholas street so <clears throat> if anybody's in scarborough they can go see where um the belcombs lived while they were there and um one of the other cool things about scarborough is there's a, a windmill in scarborough that uh, dr belcombe used to own when they first moved to scarborough and it's still standing and it's a bed and breakfast, so you can actually stay there. So you can actually stay in the windmill where Mariana was a um, probably a kid, I imagine, running around at some point. Um, so that brings us, um, and of course, we'll, we, we can come back to the Belcoms for more information, but that will bring us into the intro for the Belcoms version two. So I call them version two because this is um, Steph's uh, family, and um, it's the only other Belcoms that come next. Because, like I said, Mrs. Milne married um, a Milne, and so all of their descendants are Milnes or others. So, with V2 um, group, we've got um, Steph and Harriet, and then they had so we've got John Cotton William Belcom. Um, um, he um, actually ended up joining the Navy. And he was discharged for disorderly contact, conduct, um, um, most probably from the records due to alcoholism because he died just a few months later 
of, um, and it, it said, it states like liver failure. So, um, and, and there's also some um, uh, newspaper articles that talk about his disorderly conduct and stuff having to do with alcohol. So um, that was unfortunate. So yeah, so he died in 1845. The next brother, Henry Mountford Meek uh, Belcom. So he also died in 1845, but he brought himself over to uh, the U.S. And he actually ended up dying in Boston um, and is buried in a cemetery there. So um, good news that that's closer to me so that when I am able to go find it, um, it's not that far. Um, but um, other, so there's not a whole lot of information, obviously, because now that we're getting into these next layers of, of people, none of the family did anything significant to like be, you know, nothing was named after them, nothing uh, went on um, where they would have all sorts of documents and stuff that people were trying to access. So there's not a whole lot about them, um, but because of course he's got military records, it was easy to find stuff on John and then, um, um, Henry's, uh, death records. So I don't know what Henry did, um, while until 1845, but he decided to come to the U S and he, he was staying at the hotel that Charles Dickens stayed at in Boston, which is interesting because Charles Dickens was friends with Stephen Harriet and they corresponded and there's actually letters that still exist. Um, and so it's, you know, in some of the letters, Charles Dickens even says like, give kind regards to your family, say hello to the kids. So, you know, it could be very well that maybe Henry and Charles Dickens, you know, were friends and he, you know, went there because he knew Charles Dickens was there. So, but he died in Charles Dickens' favorite hotel in Boston. Um, so then we go on to um, my um, second favorite, Mariana. So this one is Mariana's niece with the exact same name. So Mariana Percy Belcom. She was born in 1821. Um, Ann Lister talked um, Steph, or at least according to the journals and the way she praises it, um, into naming Mariana after Mariana. So the exact same name. Um, and so that's why I call her V2, so that when I'm talking about the Marianas, it's easy to keep them apart. But so her entire life um, from the uh, letters from Mariana that still exist and the mentions in Anne's journals. Um, so Mariana was a very sickly kid. They didn't know what she had at that time. There were no, um, the doctors weren't able to determine what she had. They thought it was consumption or TB at one time, but that's, that was ruled out. Um, but there was lots of mentions about her um, being an invalid, her not being able to be part of society, her not being able to um, travel. And um, so it's interesting that she's actually the one that outlived the entire family. So she lived to be 80 years old um, and did all sorts of really cool things in York and traveled and did things. So um, it's, it's, it's interesting that her childhood was seen like that. So whatever she did have or might have had, um, like that's another area of, of interest to, to research from that medical perspective. Um, but um, she spent some time at the Isle of Wight at the um, Royal um, hospital for consumption, but so she could have gotten it or, or, um, had it later, but they did think something was wrong with her lungs. But in those early years, they kept saying it wasn't, um, consumption. There is a, um, a funny entry that, uh, Bika did some art for about Ann Lister making a joke about, um, the parents need to leave because she thought they were enabling Percy to be bedridden all the time. And so she made the comment that um, the parents need to leave so they can just burn the bed and that will do Percy good because she'll have, be forced to actually do things and that will cure her and um, get her moving. So, um, so yeah, so that, um, that part of, of Percy is really interesting. But um, next, her uh, next brother, George Percy, or I'm sorry, Jar George Priestley Belcom. So we've got another Priestley name. Um, so he actually died in 1840, um, and um, uh, there's actually, um, I think it was, I think he died from fever, um, is what he died from. But then we've got Edward Strickland Belcom, which there's not a whole lot of information that I found on him yet, so I don't know what his story is. Um, but then we have the youngest son, who has been out into the world a lot, because there's lots of records on him, it's Francis Edward Belcom. 
So he lived uh, until um, 1893. Percy lived until 1901. But um, Francis was a reverend. And so he was a very well-known reverend. Um, he um, um, was a reverend in Edinburgh for a while. And so he's got a church up there with a giant window dedicated to him. Um, and um, there were multiple obituaries in even um, in some books and stuff that were a couple pages long. So um, there were wonderful things said about him. Um, in the records of his that I found though, the reason he comes up so often is because he sued everybody. So anytime something happened in the family, so whether it was somebody that died and there was a will, he sued um, um, to, I assume change it. So I haven't been able to find all of the paper documents through the whole legal process for all of his suits, but um, I've been able to like find um, the basics of either the beginning of the suit or like, I might not, I haven't found the beginning of some, but then there was like the, um, um, like the conclusion on one. But um, yes, he was very sue happy. He sued for property. He sued for um, wills. Um, and um, so I don't know where that connection is, like why he was so sue happy and, um, but people loved him. So, but he did sue the estate of Lou. So when Lou died, so Mariana died in 1868, um, Lou died in 1870 and Ellie died in 1871. So um, Mariana died with about 2000 pounds. Lou died with um, about 18,000 pounds so the, um, her estate, which I can't find her will yet, hopefully we can find it. Um, she, whoever she left her stuff to, apparently um, Francis did not like it. So he sued the estate. Um, and I haven't been able to find that, um, that ruling to see like it, what he got or what he got to change. But um, Percy, um, when she died, her probate um, had uh, 21,000 um, pounds. So... Um, oh, and Ellie, so Ellie, when her and her husband died, they had 7,000. So the cool part is, is that not like there is the belief that the Belcombs didn't have any money, um, but due to, and I know that was one of the reasons why people say that like, oh, Mariana um, had to marry for that, which maybe at that time was the case, but even Dr. Belcom at one time um, did have a good, a good amount of um, assets properties included. And so um, the Belcom family did have money and, and in the end, they ended up with a lot of money. And um, I do know Steph ended up with a whole lot of railroad, um, um, railroad shares, which he passed on to um, Percy. And so that was one of the ways that she was able to um, make so much money. In fact, she's got in one of her censuses, she's listed as a railroad shareholder. Um, and then it's independent means, but in all the other ones, but, um, um, the railroad did help the Belcoms quite a bit, um, in, in their money making. Um, so, um, so yeah, so that is like a quick overview on those, on the Belcoms version too. Um, so the cool thing is, yeah, Mariana lived to be 80, just like Mariana V1 lived to be 80. Um, she outlived her entire family and, um, um, the other cool part about Francis is he also, um, when he passed away, he had about 24,000 pounds. And so he ended up having three sons. Um, his first one was by his first wife. She passed away. He remarried and had two more sons, but when he died, he didn't leave anything to his eldest son. He left it all to his youngest son. So that's something that I thought might, could be an interesting route to see why, why that was the case since, you know, usually either you left it to multiple kids or your, your eldest son. So, um, uh, but there is, there's lots of wills still to be found for this family. So if, if somebody's interested in researching that sort of stuff, um, um, definitely the will route. Um, some wills are in the national archives, um, but that is one of the things where I don't think there was uh, like complete records kept of all the years. So the wills can be hard to find at times. Um, but they do get stumbled on. So just because you might not be able to find one at first, it could end up somewhere or as the archives are digitizing things slowly, but surely new records come up all the time. So um, I will always go back, even if I've 
looked for Lou a thousand times in, in an archive, like I'll go through my keyword searches multiple times because maybe what I couldn't find 10 months ago, today now a document might pop up that, that wasn't there before. So if you're researching this stuff, keep going back and, and searching for your keywords because you never know when, when something will pop up. Okay, so I'm going to see if there was any questions on, okay, I see the time check. Okay, um, so a quick um, little bit more information on Percy um, and, and, and her family. So um, another cool aspect of Percy um, is that um, she ended up living her ad entire adult life with a woman named Elizabeth Hopkinson. So there is some unknowns about exactly who Elizabeth was. She's listed as multiple things on different records. So um, sometimes she starts out as a lady's maid and then 10 years later, she's a companion. And then she remains a companion for several years. And then um, um, she is randomly listed as a visitor on two censuses um, in 1880, sorry, 1990 and um, 1890 and 1900. But what's interesting is that um, all of the newspaper articles that Percy was part of because, so Percy was a um, uh, on the board of the RSPCA. So she attended monthly meetings, which you can see her listed in multiple newspaper articles for that. Percy also um, attended multiple weddings. So back then um, they would list, of course, the wedding and then they'd list the full list of presents and who gave those presents. So there are multiple um, newspaper articles with um, Miss Belcom and Miss Hopkinson together in, in the same <laughs> the same sentence and the, the what they gave to the wedding uh, or as the wedding gift. So like there was like a, um, like a teapot and things like that, but it's coming from the two of them. And so back then, if you were a lady's maid, you were not going to, or, or even just, you know, a companion necessarily, you wouldn't necessarily be listed um, on those sorts of things um, as an actual guest with the other person. So some people say that, oh, that's what she was. She was a companion. Um, but I think there might have been more to that because um, they also uh, were buried next to each other. So Steph and his family, he bought that first plot. Um, and then it wasn't too long after the second plot for the Hopkinses was bought, but not quite sure who bought it. Um, but um, Percy is buried on the left one with the cross. Um, Elizabeth Hopkinson and her family are buried in the one next to it. And then when Percy died, she left her house to Elizabeth. So Elizabeth lived there until she died in 1912 um, as, and she was listed as the homeowner. So that is, that is um, there's just a lot of interesting dynamics about that relationship. Another really cool thing is that when um, Percy died, Elizabeth um, purchased um, a giant stained glass window at St. Olive's, which is one of the oldest churches in York, um, and actually has it dedicated to Percy um, and includes her own name in the inscription on that window. So that was pretty fascinating to find. So I would like to believe that maybe um, little Percy ended up very much like her aunt. And, um, you know, maybe that was one of the reasons her aunt um, you know, was, was, um, cause she took care of her as a kid and, and, and was, she took interest in her schooling and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, so I, I would like to believe that Percy, um, yeah, took after Mariana, um, and that she was actually able to fulfill what Mariana and Anne didn't get to, but she was able to do that with Elizabeth. So, um, and one of the other things about Percy, cause there's, haven't been able to find any pictures yet is, um, that, a uh, piece of the journal that I've got there is where Anne is talking about her looking plain looking. So um, not so sure if she looked, ended up looking like Mariana because Anne didn't think she was plain looking, but it'd be interesting to see what Anne considers plain looking. Um, so at least her as a kid looking like that. Um, so um, speaking of portraits, so of course now we know what Mariana uh, looked like. And we also have um, Dr. Williams portrait and we have Steph's portrait. So of course, of course, we're going to find the men's portraits, right? So uh, Dr. Belcom and then Steph was part of the um, 
Um, um, and Ann Boyens was uh, awesome to find this picture of Steph back when she was looking at York um, Medical, um, I think it was the York Medical Society where her, um, where he was listed um, in the archives um, with his picture in there. So people, you can go there and see it um, if you want to. The top picture I found on an old antiquarian bookstore, they were selling it. So they didn't have any um, information on where it had come from. But um, 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 I just lost my train of thought. But yeah, so that's the, that's the picture that we have of, um, of Dr. Uh, Dr. Belcom. And so one of the cool things is like, you know, trying to see similarities. So they, you can definitely tell they have similar noses. Um, so hopefully it'll be interesting to see if we find more pictures of all these people, um, if that, that, those kinds of characteristics carry over. Um, and so, um, so yeah, so I'm going to um, quit uh, <laughs> not talking now and um, um, just repeat that um, hopefully people find something that they can um, latch onto with the Belcoms, whether you start with Anne's journals and all the things that are mentioned about them or what, but there is some fascinating aspects about this family and, um, and um, the sorts of things that they did. And so this um, um, signature from Mariana, so this is the last known signature we have. So after yet, there could be more, hopefully there's more, but in 1860, one, or I'm sorry, 1862, so there was some mix up or apparently it seems there was some mix up about Charles's will. So he actually ended up leaving Mariana like over 8,000 pounds and most of the stuff in the house besides um, um, anything that was like family heirlooms. So she was able to take almost anything she wanted from the house um, with her as well as like 8,000 pounds. Well, I don't know if it was held up in court or what happened because I haven't been able to find like the middle of the story, but um, in 1862, she's writing to the lawyer asking, what well, it almost sounds like she's begging um, for him to release some of the money to her because she really needs it. And um, so this is, she ends saying, you're sincere and obliged to Mariana Percy Lawton. Um, and so this would have been, she was, uh, would have been uh, around 72, 74 years old here um, at this. So um, I thought that was interesting. So there's more stuff out there as well when it comes to um, Charles Lawton and more of his information because I mean, she so she died with 2000 pounds. So I doubt she blew through 6000 pounds in eight years. I mean, she could have, but um, I'm guessing she ended up not getting what he had actually left to her. So it'll be interesting to find out um, more information for that. Um, there, because you could talk about the Belcombs and all of their lives and what they did for like 24 hours nonstop. Um, I have a lot of stuff on, on, um, um, the, my, her story in the archives blog. So if you guys are interested in the Belcombs, you can read more and I've got some videos on there. Um, and then of course you can always reach out and ask me anything. Cause I will talk about the Belcombs and Mariana, um, all the time. So that is that nice introduction. So um, I think we've got like seven, seven-ish minutes. So if anybody wants to like come off mute and ask a question, feel free. Um, Cause yeah, if I can answer it, I definitely would. Or um, let's see, I'll see. Ooh, how about a Belcom Summit? I would totally, totally be into that. Um, ah, thank you, Steph reminded. Yeah, click hand to raise a question. Um, see if I can. I don't see any hands. Let me see if I can find any uh, questions so I don't want to miss anybody. Nothing. Um, I, Margo, I think you said you had lots of questions at the beginning of this at the beginning of this session. Did I answer all of your questions for you? Okay. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell me if Mariana liked pineapple on pizza? <laughs> um, so yes, I don't know anything about, uh, are you talking about version one or version two? Oh my gosh. Version one. Yes. I don't know anything about um, 
Mariana's interest in food. I do know that, um, so Ann Lister got um, some recipes from Mariana and from Mariana's mom, or I'm sorry, uh, Steph's wife, Harriet. Um, and so there are um, recipes out there for biscuit, Belkham biscuits that you can make. Um, so it's cookies that um, uh, Steph's wife gave Ann um, the recipe for. And then Mariana's recipe was for uh, <laughs> fried cabbage. So if anybody likes fried cabbage or cookies, there are recipes that you can um, make. That. Uh, Chantel, you have questions from uh, Suzanne Piotrowski? Yes, please. Okay. Are they on chat or is that on, on um, sound? In the on, on sound it is. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 Um, thanks for your brilliant, brilliant uh, research. Um, I have a question. I read um, in the letter from Anne to Mariana um, that little Mariana lived part of her time uh, with the Lawtons. Uh, can you tell why this happened? Um, yeah, so I, I don't know the extent of like how long she stayed, but she would go and stay with Mariana. Um, so I don't know if like um, it, if it was actually living or just staying for a long time, but Mariana um, helped pay for Percy's schooling. Um, and so there was a school, I think it was in Kent where she went to for a while. And then there was mention in another letter that she spent time in London, which I think was at school because her cousin Eliza Lawton went to school there too. And in the letter, Mariana is listing the subjects that they took together with the tutor. And so, um, uh, yeah, I assume it was um, Percy was staying with Mariana, um, you know, just because that was her aunt. Um, but I, but yeah, I don't, I, I don't have any records before 1841 when it comes to census. So I don't have any records that show like how long she was there or any mention of that. Okay. But Mariana, yeah, Mariana did see Percy as kind of like the daughter that she never had. And I know um, um, it was mentioned before that Mariana was hoping that Percy would marry her Lawton nephew. Um, and so uh, William, who ended up dying um, in that accident in 1833. Um, and so, or 1834. Um, but yeah, um, Percy didn't get to marry him, of course. And so that was one of, one of the ways that Mariana thought she was going to be taken care of in her old life after Charles died was, was with Percy and, and William Lawton. Um, Next question from uh, Patricia thank Book. You. So Chantel, to clarify, um, Mariana received eight that was to receive eight thousand pounds from Charles Lawton plus belongings, and she ended up with two thousand pounds. That that's my clarification. But then, didn't Ann Lister leave her something, or did Ann Walker uh, mm. transfer anything to her from Ann Lister's will? So um, yeah, the, it was roughly 8,000 in the original, in the will, Charles will. And then I don't know what she actually got, but when she died, she had 2,000 listed, 2,000 pounds listed on her probate. And then um, when it comes to Ann Walker, she left a hundred pounds to Mariana Percy Belcombe, the, 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 the niece V2, because that was technically Anne's got, Ann Lister's goddaughter. So I don't know if Anne asked her to do that or like if Anne met Percy while she was um, with, you know, Dr. Belcom in York. I don't know how that connection was made. But yes, Anne Walker left 100 pounds, I believe, to Percy um, in her will. Question from Deborah Torres. Hey, Chantel, uh, this is the first time I had heard that the original name was Bullcock. Or is that family, you know, from that area and have you traced back, you know, to the Bullcocks and what they were doing before uh, Dr. Dr. Belcom Bullcock, you know, to his ancestors? Yeah. Um, so um, SJ on Twitter, I don't know if, if somebody can um, has her blog link, but she's actually been doing a, a bunch of amazing research on the Bullcocks. Oh, thanks, Steph and um, th that background. So the only reason I had found the Bullcock is because I stumbled across, um, literally almost tripped over Mrs. Milne's grave and found the Bullcock name on the side of it and was like, why is there 
a bullcock man on Mrs. Milne's grave because she did not remarry. And so that's the only way I found that. But yeah, she had actually found, um, um, I think she's got like a family tree and, and a blog that has all sorts of background information on them. My focus has been like the, the siblings, the kids and forward. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you are interested in the Bullcock stuff, de definitely check out her blog. It's got some great stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Do we know how many affairs Charles had to give Mariana VD? Um, I, I do not know. I just know that there was talk in Anne's journal about, um, about um, uh, Mrs. Grantham and possibly having a son um, from that, that he, that he showed her. Um, but I will say, I know we're, we're at the top, we're, um, but um, whether Charles was a bad guy or not, so apparently the townspeople loved him. And so there's newspaper articles about people talking about how great he was. And then um, he and Mariana, so it does look like they took really good care of their um, uh, servants because when they died, they got big, nice, fancy uh, gravestones in the actual Lawton family plot. So you can go and see several of the servants in the Lawton family plot at Church Lawton, which um, I don't know if that was the norm, but I would assume it is not. Um, I, do, oh, I have no idea uh, about the mill, but yes. So um, thank you everybody for um, coming and listening to me talk about Mary Ellen Belcombs. Um, um, yeah, it's been fun and there's way more to learn out there. So anybody interested in researching, go get, go get the Belcombs.